Welcome to part one of our Mental Resiliency series. This series is a part of the Four Wing Balance Library, an initiative of the Four Wing Balance Steering Committee. During this session, we will discuss what stress and resiliency are and review the mental health continuum model. What is stress? Stress is a subjective experience and the definition may vary based on the person who is explaining it. When we look at the definition of stress for most organizations and the dictionary, it is explained as a condition or feeling that is experienced when a person perceives the demands exceed their personal and social resources that they can mobilize. In other words, the event that is happening is too great a toll on an individual's coping mechanisms and the support that is available to them, and so as a result, they're going to feel stressed. Many people view stress as always being harmful. Bad stress is termed distressed, and we see this with various events such as the death of a loved one, getting into a car accident, or losing a job. Good stress is known as eustress and comes from positive events that can still be stressful. For example, planning a wedding, having a baby, or gearing up for a big race. Let's talk about the basics of how we get stressed. First, an event or situation happens, like the car accident pictured here. Then we have a mental filter or a perception of the event. So thinking of a car accident, would we be calm? Are we upset? What about insurance? Were we at fault? Did someone get hurt? Our stress level will be based on how we perceive the event. So if we perceive it as just a fender bender, everyone is fine, it's not a big deal, then we'll likely manage the stressor well. If someone is hurt, or this is our second at fault accident this year, or maybe we're driving a really expensive loaner car, then we, that may make our stress level go up and we might end up not managing stress well. So what is resiliency? Resiliency is the ability to adapt well and to bounce back from adversity, trauma, tragedy, or significant sources of stress. It's also about growing from the experience. If we don't learn from it, when that event or a similar event happens again, we'll struggle just the same. If we learn from it, we might not be docked down as hard. We also know what works and what didn't work, and we may be able to bounce back quicker. Just because bad things happen, it doesn't mean your overall life is or will be bad. You are in control of your life, even if you may not be in, able to control a certain event or situation. The good news is that resiliency is not an innate personality trait and can be learned and nurtured. Although there are certain factors that may make some individuals more resilient than others, it doesn't mean that resiliency is something only certain people can have. The ability to become resilient is ordinary not extraordinary. It can be developed through your behaviors, thoughts, and actions. Remember that just like any skill, resiliency requires time and intentionality. Increasing resilience enables you to get through difficult circumstances while also empowering you to grow and improve your life. Being resilient doesn't mean you're immune from distress. The mental health continuum model shows that mental health fitness and mental deterioration is on a continuum. People can move across the continuum depending on what their life experiences are and how they manage those experiences. It's normal for people to move back and forth between the green and yellow zones, and less frequently the orange and red zones. So if we look here, the green zone is healthy or normal functioning. The yellow is reacting, which is common reversible distress. The injured is severe and persistent functional impairment and the red is ill or clinical disorder, severe functional impairment. So let's take a look at what it might look like if people were to move down the continuum. So first, let's take a look at changes in mood. So if somebody were in the healthy zone, they would have normal mood fluctuations, they may be calm and confident. In the reacting or yellow zone, somebody may be irritable, impatient, nervous, or sad. In the injured, or orange zone, somebody may be angry, anxious, or have pervasive sadness. And in the red or ill zone, somebody would be easily enraged, excessive anxiety or panic, depressed mood, or numb. Our next area would be changes in thinking and attitude. So in the healthy zone, we would have a good sense of humor, taking things in stride, and the ability to concentrate and focus on tasks. In the yellow or reacting zone, Somebody maybe have displaced sarcasm, intrusive thoughts, 
or be sometimes distracted and lost focus on tasks. In the orange or injured zone, somebody may have a negative attitude, recurrent intrusive thoughts or images, and be constantly distracted or can't focus on tasks. In the ill or red zone, somebody may be non-compliant, experience suicidal thoughts or intent, and experience the inability to concentrate, loss of memory, or cognitive abilities. With changes in behavior performance, in the healthy or green zone, somebody may be physically and socially active and performing well. In the yellow or reacting zone, somebody may experience decreased activity or socializing and then some procrastination. In the orange or injured zone, we might see avoidance, tardiness, decreased performance, or beginning to pull away from family. In the red or ill zone, we may see withdrawal, absenteeism, can't perform duties or tasks, and not mentally present at the home. For physical changes in the healthy or green zone, we see normal sleep patterns, a good appetite, feeling energetic, and maintaining a stable weight. In the reacting or yellow zone, we may experience some trouble sleeping, changes in eating, some lack of energy, and some weight loss or gain. In the orange or injured zone, there might be restless sleep, a loss of appetite, some tiredness or fatigue, fluctuations or changes in weight. In the ill or red zone, we might see somebody not being able to fall or stay asleep, no appetite, constant lasting fatigue or exhaustion, and extreme weight loss or gain. Changes in addictive behaviors. In a healthy or green zone, we would see limited alcohol consumption with no binge drinking, limited or no addictive behaviors, and no trouble or impact in these areas, so social, economic, legal, financial, due to substance use or problematic use. In the yellow or reacting zone, we might see regular to frequent alcohol consumption with some limited binge drinking, some regular to addictive behaviors, and limited to some trouble or impact due to substance use. In the orange or injured zone, we might see frequent alcohol consumption with binge drinking and a struggle to control addictive behaviors. In the red or ill zone, we might see irregular to frequent binge drinking, addiction, and significant trouble or impact due to substance use. So this is the end of part one of the Mental Resiliency series. To learn how to become resilient or some tips and tricks to become resilient, check out part two of our Mental Resiliency series, part of the Forming Balance Library.